The dream was never one about mastery or being a lord. The dream the entire time was about sustenance, about one brother, Joseph, keeping the others alive. And the famine grew grave in the land. And it happened when they had eaten up the provisions that they had brought to Egypt, that their father said to them, go back, buy us some food. And Judah said to him, saying, the man firmly warned us, saying, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And of course, in verse 11, Israel relents. He has to relent. If it must be so, do it. And of course, they, they go back. They take double the silver. They bring Benjamin to Joseph and they meet Joseph one more time and they explain to him how they got the silver in the back and that they've brought back even more silver. And Joseph reassures them, all is well with you. Do not fear. Your God and the God of your father has placed treasure for you in your bags. Your silver has come to me. And he brought Simeon out to them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and he gave them water and they bathed their feet. And they prepared a tribute against Joseph's arrival at noon, for they had heard that there would, they would eat bread. And Joseph came into the house, and they brought him the tribute that was in their hand into the house, and they bowed down to him at the, at the ground. There's that beautiful bowing down moment again, the dream coming to pass. And he has asked how they were, and he said, Is it well with your aged father of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they said, All is well with your servant, our father. He is still alive. And they bowed down one more time. And he raised his eyes, and here it is, and he saw Benjamin, his brother, his mother's son, and he says, is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? And they said, God be gracious to you, my son. And Joseph hurried out for his feelings for his brother overwhelmed him, and he wanted to weep. And he went into the chamber and wept there. And he bathed his face and came out and he held himself in check. And he said, serve bread. And this is a stunning moment. The, the meal is such a brief scene, but it's so perfect. And they were seated before him. The firstborn according to his birthright, the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled to each other. And of course, what they're marveling at here is that Joseph would actually know the birth order, that he can put them in the correct position. And he had portions passed to them from before, and Benjamin's portion was five times more than the portion of all the rest. As if Joseph is reminding them of the favoritism that is there with Benjamin. So yes, everything is right, all the birth order is in place, and yet we see a favor heaped upon Benjamin here. And this, of course, leads us to chapter 44 leads us to Joseph's ultimate plan to put the goblet inside of Benjamin's bag, to accuse him of stealing. He says, How could we steal from your master's house silver or gold? He of your servants, with whom it be found, shall die, and what's more, we shall become slaves to our Lord. And he said, Even so as by your words, let it be. He with whom it be found shall become a slave to me, and you shall be clear. And they hurried, and each man set down his bag on the ground, and each opened his bag, and he searched, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest, and he found the goblet in Benjamin's bag. Note what Joseph is going to do here. He says, the man in whose hand the goblet was found, he shall become my slave, and you, you go in peace to your father. Look at that line. You go in peace to your father. But they know there will be no peace here as they go to their father. And this really is kind of the stunning moment. This is Joseph playing off of the entire history of what they have done to him, the entire history of the favoritism in the family. Because think about what they have now. Their father's beloved son, Benjamin. What has he been accused of? A thief. Oh, think about how delicious this could be going back to Israel. They could look at him and say, your beloved son is a thief. Look at how wrong you were to favor this thief. But for some reason, Judah can't do so. He gives to Joseph the backstory. He says, And your servant our father said to us, You know that two did my wife bear me, and one went out from me, and I thought, Oh, he's been torn to shreds, and I have not seen him since. And should you take this one too from my presence, and harm befall him, you would bring down my gray head and evil to shale. And so should I come to your servant, my father, and the lad not be with us. 
This is so important. For his life is bound to the lad's. When he saw that the lad was not with us, he would die. And your servants would bring down the gray head of your servant, our father, in sorrow to Sheol. And so let your servant pray, stay instead of the lad, as a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father if the lad not be with us? Judah, in this beautiful end to this penitential narrative, he who recommended that they sell Joseph into slavery takes slavery on himself. And he takes slavery on himself on behalf of one that, that he assumes is guilty. And he, and he sacrifices himself for really a stunning reason. And that reason is the love of his father. In many ways, I see Judah as the hero of this story. What would it take? Think about the love that he has for his father. To fear that he would go down to Sheol mourning. To be able to swallow all of that rivalry, all of the enmity that he has for his brother, and all of the favoritism that his father has been heaping on Joseph and Benjamin this entire time. And Judah is willing to take all that on and stay in Benjamin's stead on, out of love for his father. And of course, Joseph sees that the entire narrative has been disrupted that Judah is broken free, that the Joseph story is no longer, that there is something new here. There is a reconciliation, that the brothers have come around. In chapter 45, we get to see the reunion, and Joseph could no longer hold himself in check before all who stood in attendance upon him. And he cried, clear out everyone around me. And no man stood with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians heard, and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed before him. And Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me, pray. And they came close, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. And so now do not be pained, and do not be incensed with yourselves that you sold me down here, because for sustenance God has sent me before you. Two years now there has been famine in the heart of the land, and there are yet five years without plowing and harvest. And God has sent me before you to make you a remnant on earth and to preserve your life for you to be a great surviving group. And now to bring this, the, this story of the sibling rivalry to full circle, Joseph finally reads his dream. That the dream was never one about mastery or being a lord. The dream the entire time was about sustenance about one brother, Joseph, keeping the others alive. He rejects their dream of Lord and Master and rather offers them to this understanding of this dream, this dream of sustenance, that Joseph will in fact take care of them. Joseph the dream reader now finally gets to read the dream of Joseph the dreamer, the young man who didn't understand the dreams. He understands now. Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore all of Hillsdale College's online courses. They are free and for everyone who loves to learn.